Hey, this is Craig Valentine. Welcome to Five Steps, Five Simple Steps to Building the Perfect Evening Routine. Okay, so if you are struggling to get to sleep at night and you are not waking up on time or waking up with crazy energy, it's because your evening routine kind of sucks. All right, so we're going to solve that in this little presentation. Okay, take a couple minutes, totally change your life because I know this has happened to you. It's happened to me a lot or it did happen to me. I remember that, man, we're going back like nearly 20 years, like when the first Harry Potter movie came out. Cause I remember like it was after watching the Harry Potter movie and I was going, going to bed and I was going, Oh my God, I'm so tired. Right. Because I wanted to get to bed at a certain time. And maybe you've had this where you wanted to get to bed at a certain time. Then you look at the clock and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm an hour late for bed or I'm 30 minutes late for bed or two hours late for bed. But I was late for bed that night watching that Harry, after watching that Harry Potter movie, I think it was like six hours long or something. And I was so concerned about the next morning. Oh man, I'm going to be so tired tomorrow night. I'm going to go to bed really early. And sure enough, I woke up and I was tired and I was dragging my butt all day long. That was back when I was a personal trainer. And then the next night, the night that I said I was going to go to bed so early, I didn't get to bed on time. And so I was late again. And it was just this cycle that I kept getting in into, um, you know, maybe one night per week, I would crash early. But then on the weekend, I would totally blow it. And I just don't want you to be struggling in the mornings when you have the opportunity to have the greatest discipline, willpower, and intention and dominate your days, but be so tired from the night before. Because the question is, well, why is an evening routine so important? I thought you were all about the millionaire morning routine, Mr. Valentine. What the heck does my evening routine have to do with anything? And this is just like, well, what does what like practice have to do with performing really great at the Super Bowl? Duh. I mean, it's the practice makes perfect. And the evening routine sets you up for a great morning routine so that you can get everything done and then spend time with your family in your evening routine, which does have to have a few simple steps and rules so that you don't let it get off track. And so that you get to bed on time, right? This is really about getting to bed on time so you can wake up in the morning and totally crush it. All right. So let's go through the five steps to getting to bed on time. Number one is let's start with the end in mind. The end goal that we're going for here is a great morning routine. Now, in order, this is a bit of a surprise, of course. That's why I have the word surprise there. Uh, surprise, you have to reverse engineer your morning routine first, right? You need to know what, your, uh, what time you're going to get up, what you're going to do, what you're going to focus on, when you're going to spend time with your family and get your kids to school. You need to have your routine dialed in for the morning so that you can then reverse engineer and go, okay, listen, if I want to like hit the ground running at six o'clock or seven o'clock or 7.30 or eight or five o'clock in the morning, whatever time, right? It's not about the hour that you get up. It's about what you do with the hours that you are up. But if you, if you, are, if you don't know your morning routine, then you're not going to have a good idea of what your evening routine is going to look like. So just make sure that you're planning the night before, the day before for your morning routine, what time you're going to get up, how quickly you're going to get to work, what your number one project is going to be so that you can win the morning. Now we can step back and we can say, hey, let, listen, what are, the, what are the successful clients of Craig do in the evening? Here are some of my uh, successful clients, Pedro Skoulian, Jason Capital, Sharon Servazzo, Rob Hanley. This is us at Mastro's in uh, Orange County, California, Costa Mesa. That's exactly, we love going to that Mastro's. And we, you know, we had a very early dinner. I mean, we, I think we met at like 5, 30, 6 o'clock, you know, to, so that we could get home and get to bed on time. So when we go into the actual evening routine, you got to start with that non-negotiable bedtime. If you say like, hey, I try and go to bed at 10 o'clock, the odds of you actually getting to bed at 10 o'clock any night during the week when you say, I'm trying to go to bed at 10 o'clock, are zero. You've got to have a non-negotiable bedtime. Like I'm in bed every work night, every school night, as I call it. I'm in bed every school night at 9.45, lights out at 9.45 or lights out at 10.30 or at 9.57 or at 8.30 PM, whatever it is. Like for us, we're always in bed before 8 PM. And I know that sounds crazy, but my wife and I love going to sleep early. We love getting up early. We, we just, you know, we had the same 24 hours in the day as you do, and we're up for about 16 of them. We just happen to like going to bed early. And I know it's not as cool as the people who stay up. It's like, yeah, man, we stay up really late. We're night owls. So cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. So I go to bed early. I'm, you know, quote unquote nerd or whatever. But we have a non-negotiable bedtime and we stick to it. And that's why every single day we crush it and we get a ton done. So you know what time you're going to get up in the morning. You know what time you have to get to bed. It's non-negotiable. 
non-negotiable. And then that sets in place what you do before that. And I'll tell you what, this is a, a little aside here from the book, Why We Sleep from Matthew Walker. He, at the end of this, like, it's a really long book, unnecessarily long. Long. He has some really bad prose in his book. Um, but at the end of his really long book, he has 12 steps for good sleep. And number one, his number one rule that reigns over all the other rules is sticking to a sleep schedule. He says, we, get, we should go to bed at the same time every night and get up at the same time every day. So non-negotiable bedtime and wake up time. If you can stick to that, you're going to sleep better, you know, more energy. But the thing that we need to do at night in order to get to bed on time is have the reverse alarm clock. The reverse alarm is the most important alarm. I don't even use an alarm in the morning anymore. I just, you know, get up naturally 15 minutes um, before, after the, you know, time I'm trying to get up at four and sometimes I get up at 4.15. Sometimes I get up at 3.45. I don't even need an alarm clock in the morning. My body just gets me up. But the reverse alarm clock, knowing when it's seven o'clock at night, that is more important to me than knowing when it's four o'clock in the morning. Now, you may need both alarms for right now. But if you, have, if you don't know what a reverse alarm is, it's an, it's an alarm that goes off an hour before bed that tells you to shut off all your electronics because the blue light stimulation keeps you up. Also, if you are on your electronics, probably on social media or on your email or checking the news, and it's always the last thing that you check before you shut your phone off that, that oh man, I got to write a snappy response to it, or it really stresses you out, which then prevents you from getting to bed on time. So an hour before bed, everything gets turned off, and then you're left with only old school activities like talking to your family or taking a bath or reading a book or making your lunch or just doing something like that that allows you to wind down and fall asleep on time. All right, so that reverse alarm clock is powerful. Then after that, once you know the time you're going to get up in your morning routine, the time you must go to bed, the time that your alarm clock is going to go off, the reverse alarm, so that you go into those old school activities, then you need to reverse engineer how the heck do we get to this point properly? So it's going to be, okay, if I want to go to bed at 10 o'clock, the reverse alarm goes off at nine. Here are the things I'm going to do from nine until 10 to wind down. And then here's what I'm going to do from six o'clock, from basically from 9 p.m. until 6 p.m. I get home from work at 6 p.m. We have dinner at 6 p.m. till about 6.45. Then I have from 6.45 to 9 p.m. What am I going to do during that time to maximize my living and also to support my bedtime routine? Well, I know that I got to spend time with the kids for about an hour helping them with homework or maybe giving them baths or whatever it is. And then you need to spend time with your uh, romantic partner. So, you know, like, hey, from you know, either 8.30 to 9 or, you know, at, at 9 o'clock, once the reverse alarm goes off, I'm going to give them all that time. Um, here are the books I'm going to read here, here. You know, there's a lot of television shows out there, but I'm only going to give myself 30 minutes to watch television. So, you know, before 9 o'clock, I have to watch television and let's schedule it in from 8 to 8.30, that sort of stuff. Now you're going to have nights where it's just going to be like, hey, let's just have fun. And then when the reverse alarm goes off at 9 o'clock, we'll stop whatever we're doing. Or there might be that you have to have some kids outings and picking them up and all that sort of stuff. Well, listen, you know, it, the, let's just say that you're sitting there and going, this is great, great. Okay, kind of helpful here. Uh, I want to go to bed 1030, but I got to pick up my son from basketball, his practice or his game goes till about 930. Um, you know, I got to have my phone on so that in case he calls me. Well, great. You can have your phone on, but you just can't go into social media. You can't have the email, et cetera, et cetera. And you need to remove the notifications so that you're not tempted to get in your phone. There's ways around all of these things so that you can still obviously be a great parent and pick people up at the right time, make sure that they're taken care of, but just avoid the electronics that are going to keep you up. Um, one other thing to consider is that as much as we'd love to stick to the Matthew Walker rule of getting up at the same time every day and going to bed at the same time every night, the going to bed at the same time every night makes it difficult for social stuff and for, you know, games for our kids. But if you can, what I do, um, or what I did when I had a very, a variable bedtime, you know, it was like, I did have some social events or dinner meetings or whatever, is I tried not to stray from the morning wake up time. I would have a, a nap later on in the day. Uh, and if I had to stay up a little bit later on a Tuesday, then I'd try to go to bed a little bit earlier on a Wednesday. So not every night's going to look the same, of course, when you have, you know, teenagers and all that sort of stuff going on that require you to live a little bit different than somebody who has, a, you know, six and seven year old. 
but do the best you can reverse engineer your evening. You've got to plan this stuff out as much as possible. And you can plan to be spontaneous too and just say, hey, we're going to do whatever the heck we want uh, one or two nights per week. Um, and then make sure your evening routine doesn't actually just start when you get home from work. You have to understand that your evening routine starts when you start drinking coffee and when you stop drinking coffee. So if you've read my book, Perfect Day Formula, you know about the 10-3-2-1-0 formula for getting great sleep. So 10 hours before bed, you need to stop drinking caffeine because caffeine has a half-life in your body. Okay, So you consume caffeine and it's broken down inside your body. If you have an espresso or a coffee in the middle of the afternoon, you wonder, oh, man, I just I can't fall asleep at night. Yeah, it's because you had a coffee like six hours before bed or three hours before bed. Now, bless your soul if you're like my mom who can have a coffee at eight o'clock at night and then just fall asleep. Like she can do that, no problem. But most people can't. And so if you are struggling to get to sleep at night, check your caffeine intake and see where the stimulants are. Now, you may not even know that you're consuming caffeine. Caffeine is in Mountain Dew, is in Coca-Cola, is of course in coffee, but you probably have no idea how much caffeine is in a venti coffee from Starbucks. It's about 200 milligrams, which is an insane amount of coffee. It's, it's nearly two and a half times the amount of coffee in a Red Bull, right? Now, a Monster Energy drink has about 170 milligrams of caffeine. That's a crazy amount. And if your kids are drinking those things and you're wondering why they're insane at night, it's because they're drinking Monster Energy drinks. Like, I don't even think I had 170 milligrams of caffeine combined by the time I was 22 years old. And, and you know, most of these kids are drinking 170 milligrams of caffeine per day. So you really, really have to be careful about that. So 10 hours before bed, cut off all caffeine sources. Three hours before bed, you got to stop the alcohol because alcohol ruins your sleep. In fact, that's why I quit drinking totally. I, I will not drink alcohol again because most of the time, you know, I never... Like for me to drink before three hours before bedtime, it's like drinking, you know, it's, it's like having a champagne at lunchtime, basically, and I'm not going to have champagne at lunchtime. So I quit drinking alcohol. But if you do go to bed at midnight, you basically have to have your last alcoholic drink around eight o'clock at night. Otherwise, that alcohol is really going to interfere with your sleep. And even if you do have it three hours before bed, it's probably going to interfere with your sleep. But you should also stop eating heavy meals because if you eat a heavy meal, then your body temperature goes up at night and it's difficult for you to sleep really well. Um, so experiment with that, uh, you know, eating further away from your bedtime. Then two hours before bed, stop all work. Okay, so you're not thinking about work. An hour before bed, you have that reverse alarm. You shut off all the electronics. And then the zero is don't press snooze in the morning. So zero is the number of times you're allowed to press snooze in the morning. So none of that. And this little system is going to help you sleep better. It's going to help you recover better. And it's going to help you dominate uh, your mornings better. All right. The other thing I say and kind of alluded to there was to track and test. So test 21 days without alcohol to see how well you sleep. Track eating four hours before bed, three hours before bed two hours before bed to see what it does to you. And it's like, wow, the further away I eat before bedtime, the better I sleep. Okay. And then you can try magnesium. You could try CBD oil or CBD gummies. I've recently experimented with those and have seen an improvement in my REM sleep. So about 50 milligrams of uh, the active ingredient CBD. Um, blue light blockers are another good way to help you eliminate that blue light stimulation from phones and lights. But I'm not saying that if you use blue light blockers, that doesn't mean you're allowed to use your phone up until you go to bed, okay? Still have to have that reverse alarm, no phone. But blue light blockers, you know, started about three hours before bed are also very helpful, okay? And then you can look at uh, some additional supplements like theanine, which help um, to, I'm not sure, I actually, I don't know exactly what it does uh, regarding caffeine, but um it is related to helping get rid of the caffeine, I believe, in your bloodstream so that you are able to fall asleep better. And if I'm wrong on that one, I apologize. That's the only thing I'm wrong about in this video. Now, again, consider the reality that not every night is going to look the same and that there are certain phases of life that you're going to go through where you will not be able to have the greatest sleeps of your life and you will not be able to have the greatest morning routine of your life. So if you have three kids between the ages of 16 and 18, you probably aren't going to get to sleep at the same time every single night. I mean, that's ridiculous to think that. Um, on the flip side, if you have two kids under the age of two, 
the reality is, is that those children are the most important thing in your life and having an amazing morning routine, uh, particularly one with a whole bunch of nonsense, like cold showers and journaling and all that stuff is probably not going to happen for about three years. And it's okay. You just, you, it's a phase of life. It's a season of life where there's more important things in your morning routine, your evening routine, and that's okay, but we do the best we can. And that's why I built the perfect week formula. So if you don't have this book where I outline exactly what you see in front of me and how you can build your business around your life and not your life around your business, then head over to craigvalentine.com forward slash free books. The perfect day formula will take you through the 10, 3, 2, 1, 0 formula. The perfect week formula will help you build up the perfect week for you, the perfect evening routine, the perfect morning routine. And then Unstoppable will help you overcome any anxiety and stress and dominate in business and in life and help you plan out your future as well. So head over to craigvalentine.com, get those uh, free books, uh, craigvalentine.com forward slash free books. Get all three of my books for free, no opt-in required. These books will change your life. Over 100,000 people and executives and entrepreneurs and busy parents have used these to make more time. And I can't wait for you to be my next success story with those books. All right. So drop a comment down below. Buy those, or don't buy those books. Get them for free. Um, you can buy the physical copies on Amazon if you want. But looking forward to hearing your questions, comments, concerns about the evening routine so I can come back and make another video for you answering your questions. All right. So we'll see you on CraigValentine.com forward slash free books. We'll see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.